I want to put a display on my face. Well, this episode of Some Gadget Guy is brought to you by viewers like you, all of the incredible people sharing content across social media, and the amazing generosity of my patrons at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. More info on these amazing nerds later in the video. All right, the folks at Xreal sent these my way. These are the Xreal one uh, to test drive and share some thoughts. This is a new headset that might not look tremendously different from some of the other face displays that I've reviewed on this channel, but it's an important practical update for face display technologies. I know these companies would prefer that I call them AR glasses, and there is some augmented reality that you can do with these, but the main thing I use them for, they're incredible portable monitors. It's easily the most accessible way to pack and carry a huge television anywhere you wanna go. The Xreal One build on the Xreal Air 2 Pro while incorporating the core features that I like from my Xreal Beam. Like I said, this hardware looks familiar. We've got binocular micro OLEDs with birdbath optics. The screens are up here uh, at the bridge, and then these lenses, they kind of periscope the image into your eye. From the previous pros, the electrochromatic panels return three settings to pass light through, so we don't need to carry the clip-on visor that older kinds of glasses used. Got a cable out the left arm that gets power and video from a host computer of some kind. Really nice Bose stereo speakers in the arms, and the arms have that click adjustment to help angle the lenses for different faces. Now on the glasses, we have a triple button setup, which is where this gets a bit spicier. These glasses control their own motion and head tracking, three degrees of freedom built in. The Xreal One can toggle between a smooth follow, or we can lock a screen in place. The image and location processing is inside. That's what we used to need this beam to do. So the beam would take video info from a host, like a phone, tablet, laptop, but then it would merge that video with the information from the sensors in the glasses to smooth out movement or to lock a window in one position in space around you. Now the glass is pulling power from some kind of source can handle the location processing all on their own. There's no separate brain computer required. Now, even for some of its quirks and battery issues, I found that I was using the original Beam quite a bit with my Windows on ARM tablet. It was kind of a perfect travel multi-screen setup. The tablet would sit really low on a desk, and I could see that really easily through the bottom of the glasses, and then I would dock a larger display up above my tablet screen. Now I can achieve that combo display without having to pack a separate lump. The smooth follow is nice and silky. I don't think people can always understand what this experience is like with me just describing it with like words, but you don't know how often your head moves until you fix a display to your skull. Our brains have this natural image stabilization for our eyes. We don't notice all of these tiny adjustments and movements. With glasses on, some folks in my comments have complained about headaches and motion sickness because those little movements are kind of magnified when you're projecting a screen out in space in front of you. It's kind of like the difference uh, shooting wide angle on a camera versus shooting telephoto on a camera. A very small movement on a telephoto lens is gonna translate to a much bigger field of distance traveled. So what this smooth follow does is it kind of adds a bit of a buffer or a delay to that movement. I'm making these little movements and the screen mostly stays in place. It's only when I make a bigger head turn that eventually the screen will catch up with me. And that can be disabled in the glasses settings, more on that in just a bit. But these also support 3DOF, three degrees of freedom. So you want to imagine there's like a sphere around your body. You pin your display over your right shoulder and when you look away, you'll stop seeing that display, but then you turn your head back, voila, there it is. It will always stay in this position at the same distance relative to your body. So if you move to another room, the display is still gonna orient 
over your right shoulder. This is not six degrees of freedom, six DOF, where you can pin a window to like a wall, a location in space, and when you move your body around, the window will stay stuck to that wall. It's always relative to your position. You know, this is the kind of stuff I'm not sure consumers understand broadly. It's actually not easy to do 3DOF well in a slim, lightweight pair of glasses. And it's gonna be a while before we can do 6DOF well in a sleek frame and not have it cost like $10,000 for a dev kit that can only last an hour or two on a charge. But I digress. This whole rambling bit was just getting us to the point where I could talk about the buttons because we need to have on device controls that mimic the controls we used to have on the beam. The rocker switch on this arm controls the brightness of the OLEDs and then long pressing the buttons toggles the electrochromatic dimming. The way I've got my camera set up, I don't know if you're gonna see this, but here's totally blacked out and that is pretty dark. And now one more and everything's opened up a bit and I can see my office a little bit easier with my script floating right next to my camera. A new button on top of the glasses. This is a programmable action button. You can customize the actions for a short press and a long press. Out of the box, it's pre-programmed for a pass-through mode. So if I come in, and again, I don't know how well this is gonna translate, making the panels as dark as I can. If I tap this once, everything turns off. The OLEDs totally dim and the panels open up and I can see much more clearly what's right in front of me than one touch and everything goes back to a more immersive experience. So you can use it that way, or you can switch it to another feature on the glasses. Now, I added the ultra wide option as a long press to my glasses, but I wish we could use the side view, which creates this little like mini picture in picture style window. That feature is built into the glasses, but there doesn't seem to be a way for me to activate it as a quick toggle. The underside button toggles those movement options. You can switch it from smooth follow to body anchor, but then double tap, and this gets a little nerdier still. This is maybe the most exciting nerdy aspect of the X-Real One. We have a control panel that's a lot more like what we would find on a proper monitor. It's so much closer to an OSD. We have a lot more control than on previous generations of glasses to tweak the experience. For example, I felt the color was a bit warm. Comparing playback on Plex uh, against my phone screen, I was able to adjust that and cool it off just a step. As these glasses get some firmware updates, I hope we see the full range of monitor adjustments made available for saturation and sharpness and contrast, et cetera, et cetera. I, out of the box, you plug them in, they look good. I still get wow reactions from everyone I put these on, but nerds, nerds like to make more adjustments. <laughs> I've gone this long, just kind of explaining some of this experience. We should probably mention the hardware. Every generation, we see these refinements to optics and clarity. We're doing well with these 1080p OLEDs, but the optics are delivering a clearer image. What I'm impressed by is that we can arrive at a more technologically complex product than the original Nreal glasses, and we can stay at a lower overall weight than the original glasses using that blackout attachment. Obviously, the pack weight of the X-Real One is gonna be significantly less than carting around the old glasses and a beam brain to use with the glasses. When we talk about these kind of AR solutions, these multimedia experiences, I don't think they're really all day wearable glasses. I think it would be a bad idea to walk around a grocery store with these on while playing a movie. Even if you're not watching any media, the way that a birdbath optic kind of creates a periscope, on a bright sunny day, you might kind of get an image of your feet kind of getting pulled up into your field of view. They're designed specifically for that first class multimedia experience where you can really sit and enjoy what you're doing. Now every face is gonna be different and how sensitive you might be to weight on your nose and ears, that's gonna be unique to you. I love face displays, especially when I'm traveling. My last flight was to India, and even though I had a large screen in business class, it was not as nice as my glasses. I wore glasses the entire flight, dozing in and out of a rewatch of Silicon Valley. The audio is respectable. It sounds good for an open ear experience. It's another generational improvement we can expect. And now with a Bose partnership, we can hear some differences between my older glasses and these newer frames. <laughs> You're just 
just not going to use that on an airplane, though. Get yourself some earbuds or some cans that can handle the arm that goes over your ear. And I did well enough with my Sony XM4 maintaining a good seal for the ANC. The critical aspect for face displays, though, just how hugely compatible they are with almost every computer you already own and how comfortable they make every other computer you own. I show these off a lot with phones. That's how I'm reading my script right now. But plug them into a tablet, plug them into a laptop, plug them into a Steam Deck. Anything that can put out video through a USB-C port is gonna work with these. And if you have an HDMI adapter, you can get these glasses working with other devices like cameras. Something that might not have the power to drive the glasses themselves, you can add that with a little USB plug. The ability to add a giant TV to any gadget that you already own. I feel that idea is often underserved. This isn't a headset unique to itself, it makes everything else better. I think that's a big deal. It's not a one-off accessory. This isn't gonna be something you get for one phone and then it doesn't work with your next phone. This is an accessory that could breathe new life into an older device and will be broadly compatible with new gadgets coming out in the future. Plus, you just won't be that person on a flight curled over your phone with terrible posture in an uncomfortable chair. You'll be kicked back and comfy and seeing the big picture. Every generation is gonna be a balance of pros and cons. I mean, we've got really cool new tech in these, but we're also trying to minimize weight. So it's a balancing act, how much you can really push for every new product. My concerns on this are pretty minor, but they are specific because everyone's faces and eyes are different. We can control the illusion of screen size and distance, but when I set the screen to its largest and closest position, I'm getting a touch more fringing at the extreme edges of the view, just at the borders of these OLEDs. The original and reels just biologically fit my eyes a tiny bit better than these newer options. But on the x real one, I can set the distance to be just a little further out, which basically it shrinks the view a tiny bit, and I feel the overall clarity is sharper there. Your mileage will vary. It's the one main concern with these products that there's no way to know which will fit your face the best until you start trying them out. I've stuck to my end reels as they've genuinely fit my face the best. My uncle just recently took an international flight and he came over here to my place to try out my collection of face displays. For his use, the x reel weren't bad, but there was another competitor that fit him a little bit better. The fit, the comfort, and the image quality change up with every face and skull. If you've tried one display in the past and it just didn't work for you, that won't be true of all glasses and you might find an option that fits you better. I just really wish we had better ways to help people try these out in person. These don't have any batteries built in. They're pulling power from a host device to do all of this fancy image smoothing, computational optical adjustments that does come with just a slightly different wearing profile. These seem to generate just a little more heat across the brow, across my forehead, than my older N-Real and X-Real glasses. They're doing more on device, so we should expect that kind of processing difference, but I am happy that they don't get as warm or as uncomfortable. Some of those older style of glasses that would heat up just from the OLEDs operating over a period of time. It's a little bit of a trade-off and I can feel it while I'm using this as kind of a makeshift teleprompter, but I wouldn't say I'm uncomfortable. The other concern I have with the x -Real one and the way they're packed and shipped, I just don't like the new case. I mean, it's a really nice pill-shaped glasses case but it's smaller than the original x Reels case. So you have to cram these glasses and the USB cable into a smaller space and also be careful that the USB-C plugs don't come in contact with the lenses or the optics. The older case had this nifty little shelf to keep the cables separate from the glasses. So after I'm done with this review, I'm just gonna use the old case with the new frames. And that's about it, because everything else is that little generational bit of polish. Everything is that little iterative step better, and we get that big tech head tracking advancement. All right, folks, I'm bringing this review in for a landing. These multimedia glasses immediately demonstrate a core entertainment use. For the tech blogs and the publications, we're really trying to impress people with rich AR and mixed reality, stuff like Vision Pro and Quest that is really cool. It's technologically more sophisticated. I describe with words the idea of a face display and people 
generally act like, oh, that's kind of neat, I guess, but it's not cool enough for me to try it yet. I'm happy to wait until I get the magic science fiction product I deserve. But then I put these glasses on someone else's face and across the board. The reactions are so much fun. I got a lot of flack for criticizing Vision Pro after Apple's big reveal. For a brief moment, a lot of techies with a ton of cash were acting like we'd all be walking around in public with VR headsets, taking the dystopia of Ready Player One and turning that into reality, ignoring that that was a cautionary tale. But then Vision Pro just kind of whiffed it in the market. And it's this, this idea that Apple tried to market, really trying to make this look like it was a consumer facing device. This is not a thing. People don't do this. And even if I'm being more fair, I'm comparing these against a VR headset closer in price, the second screen or multimedia experience of a Quest still comes with more significant drawbacks. Size, weight, how separated you are from the environment, and maybe most seriously, the battery life. So yes, you got me there. I have to plug the Xreal into another host device for the data and for the electricity. But if I'm watching a movie on a phone, I am way more mobile and far less tethered than if I have to find power for a VR headset. And if you're gonna take a soap on the rope battery seriously from Apple, it's gotta be fine that we're plugged in here to a phone. But more than that, if the idea is I can make a TV float in the air where a TV does not exist, then dedicating the entire 1080p resolution to that task delivers fantastic clarity per dollar. Yeah, VR headsets have higher resolution screens, but that resolution is spread out over a larger field of view. I was just mentioning how I don't see folks wearing Vision Pro on airplanes, but on that recent flight that I took to India, I wasn't the only one wearing glasses like these. My buddy Josh was sporting face displays for most of that flight too. And I've hung out enough with TK to know he really uses solutions like these when traveling, especially when he's getting to plug into some kind of mini portable game console. It's such a shame that the conversation is still so focused on a science fiction representation of Terminator Vision AR because this is really fun, it's accessible and affordable today, right now. And generationally, it's exciting because we get more of that techie head tracking stuff built in now. We can float a TV in space anywhere you want. And when you're done, it fits in a shirt pocket. This is not the last time you're going to see the x -Real one on this channel. I'm gonna have a lot more to say, especially as I'm sure some other competing products will be iterating over the next year too. We're gonna have some different ideas to play with. So I will absolutely leave some links down below for more information on x -Real glasses and the x -Real one specifically. It's a product category I've been begging people to try for years now and it just keeps getting better. I love digging into stuff like this, especially where it can be really mobile first. Plug a headset into a phone with a desktop mode, a little Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and you've got the most portable workstation with a huge screen just ready to go anywhere you have mobile phone data. The folks who get to see the results of my testing and comparisons and some of my features and editorials, my amazing patrons. This list of names scrolling by on your screen right now, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart is used to the folks that are helping to keep the lights on here in the Gadget Lab. If you have the means, I would greatly appreciate folks checking out the community on patreon.com slash some gadget guy. And these cats are the coolest nerds in the universe, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy, basically everywhere but these days I'm trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, a little more on the Blue Skis, a lot less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and definitely not on the Twitters, and I will catch you all on the next review.